Hi, I'm LJ Tucker. Welcome back to 7,000 Volts, Living an Electrified Life. Today, we'll be talking about balance. And I have a special guest for a few minutes today, my very own daughter, Gabriella Tucker. Hi, Gabby. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Good. So, as you can see, I often talk about Gabby. She's a gymnast, and she has a lot of hardware around her neck. So what do you have to say today? Tell us a little bit about your medals, how you earn these medals. I worked hard, and I did my best to earn the medals I could. Okay, very, very good. Um, you have a very strong uh, mindset, I, I notice as being your father. I, I remember, I think I still told this story on the show before on you winning Camper of the Year. Do you remember that? Yes. Tell us about your mindset, what made you want it first and how, what made you very determined to be Camper of the Year? I worked hard and was kind to others and helped people in need. Okay, so you're a helper too. Yes, what, what is your favorite thing in gymnastics? Probably the skills because it's fun to do and it's what I like best. And what does the skills consist of? Is that when you're on the mat on floor dancing and stuff? Yes, sir. Okay, have you uh, met anybody famous before? Yes. In gymnastics? Yes. Who, who did you meet? Trinity Thomas. Trinity Thomas. How, how did that feel when you met Trinity Thomas? Good and nice. It was fun. It was fun? What did, you, what did you get to do? Did you get to see her doing? Was she talking to you guys? Yes. She taught us one of her routines in gymnastics. Were you able to apply anything that she taught you? Yes. Okay. So you like doing gymnastics? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you see yourself in the future? You see yourself doing gymnastics for a while? Yes, sir. What else do you want to do as being you get older? The, being in the Olympics. Oh, you want to be in the Olympics. Okay. You guys heard it first here on the show. She wants to be in the Olympics. And so as a parent, I'm going to do my best and work hard to make sure that she makes it and give her the encouragement that she needs to go to the Olympics. What else is on your mind today? Just trying my best and working hard. Okay. Do you want to talk to us about any of the medals that you have? How many medals do you have? 21. 21 medals. Was this your first, this, this was your first time doing it? Yes, sir. It's competing, 21 medals for first time competing, or first year competing. Is there, which one is your favorite medal? This one. Why is that? Why is that your favorite one? Because it sh it's a it's a very big medal, and um, it took me lots of courage to get this medal. Oh, okay. I'm well. As your father, I'm very proud of you, and I want you to keep up the good work, and can continue to do be you, be Gabby. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say to my audience out there? No. Do you, anything you want to say to any uh, other young athletes or young gymnastics? Yeah. Go ahead. Always follow your dreams and do what's best for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being on the show, Gabby. Yeah. So finding that balance, that's, that, that's, that's a part of life, and that's the puzzle that needs to be solved in anybody's life. It's, it's not hard. It's like brushing your teeth. It becomes uh, a daily habit. Like our bodies need more than food. Our body needs more than junk food. It needs more than protein. This is why uh, as we get older as individuals, especially men and, and women too, I'm not leaving the women out, we take a multivitamin. Based on your age, it's based on a multivitamin uh, that you need because at some point your body don't produce certain things so you take a supplement to make sure that your body's getting the nutrition that it needs. And that's what we call balance. That's my definition of balance. But 
we always think about the foods and the things that we put into our body. And sometimes our spirit, our soul gets neglected because we're not putting in the right nutrition, the, 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 the right nutrition spiritually. Uh, and so we get that through meditation. We get that through prayer. We get that with just focusing our mind on the things that we want. Um, and it's not always substance stuff. Like I, you know, where I'm at today is a coalition of things that I, with the mind, you know, you heard me say this on other shows or my guests say the same thing, what the mind can conceive it also can achieve. And you only can achieve that goal, uh, that vision that you may or may not have, or you're trying to get to a certain place. The only way you get there is through balance. And how do you balance that out? Is you have to find that moderation. Hey, you eat too much cake and too much sweets, uh, not only can you gain extra pounds and extra weight that you don't want, but it can have a significant bearing on your health. Uh, blood sugar, sugar diabetes. I don't even know all the names of the stuff that you can get. And, and quite honestly, I don't want to know because that stuff is not important to me. I'm not going to uh, sit and research and uh, think about stuff that I don't want to add to my life. So I think about being in a state of health, of being healthy. And so I practice balance with what I put in my mouth as far as food. From January, January 1st to today, I've lost exactly 40 pounds by changing my diet and balance out what I eat and put in my mouth. Some days, I, some weeks I went on a protein diet, no bread, no sugar. Some days it was, you know, I, I ate my vegetables, s still no bread, no sugar, and I've been able to drop from 286 pounds to 246 pounds. Uh, it was a problem when I looked in the mirror and I saw my belly hanging out like I'm an old man. I'm still a young man. I ain't that old for my belly to be sticking out that far. To me, that mattered, so I did something about it, and which brought me to balance. That's why I'm talking about balance today, because when you don't balance your life out, um, you're going to overdo something, whether it's eating or not spending enough time with family, your wife, your kids, uh, or not spending enough time creating the life that you want for yourself. Uh, there's 168 hours in a week. You know, you have to divide those hours up to how you spend your time. And, you know, if we get enough sleep, we, you know, throughout the week, that's, I, I believe they say it's between seven to eight hours. You know, so that's anywhere from 49 to 56 hours of that 168 out of a week that you're supposed to be sleeping. And, you know, some people get a little more, some people get a little less. But it also is what we call that balance. So the principles of managing not only your time, but your money and your resources is, is valid. It's important. Because when you don't do it, you can lose it. You know, if you, if you don't manage your money right and you don't pay your bills on time, such as a car note, you can get repossessed or repo, what they say. Uh, your house, whether you're renting, you can get evicted. Or if it's a mortgage, you can uh, get evicted as well. They'll do what they call foreclosure. Not, not used to it, haven't happened. And... Don't plan on any of that ever happening to me when it comes to foreclosures, when it comes to being evicted. I did have a car repo once when I was younger. Um, that won't be happening again. That's part of that BD rule that we talk about. Those bad decisions that you made earlier in life, uh, I graduated from that. Not saying that, that it can't happen, not saying that things can't uh, change in uh, circumstances where you'd be faced with that situation. It's just, I think I'm at a point now in my life that I'm going to project uh, so much positive change that my focus is just continuing to move forward. It's when we lose that balance and we don't move forward is when things that we don't account for happens. So let me go back and reflect on by managing my time right where it turned into positive change for me. Uh, you heard the stories of when I started out, I wasn't a, a true professional at what I do. So what did I do? And how did I become a professional? I became a certified arborist. And now that being 
a certified arborist, it took time. It took many nights up late reading a book, listening to audios, driving down the road, always listening to the audio where just like, you just want to throw the audio at the, at the window, you want to just throw the book against the wall, but I didn't. And because of it, I'm here where I'm at today as a certified arborist. And I can't even begin to tell you the countless, countless opportunities and doors that are open. In fact, I'm here now. I'm talking, you're listening to me now because of those opportunities. And I'm sharing that experience with you because of the balance and the time that I put in to become a certified arborist. So I'm telling you that story now from my past until now. Did I pass that arborist test the first time? Absolutely not. Did I pass it the second time? Absolutely not. The point that I'm making is I never gave up. I kept moving forward. I kept moving forward. It's funny, I remember going to Disney World, I think I was 13 or 14, and then that car, one of the little carousels, uh, Mr. Walt Disney, that's what he said, just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. My Godfather says, always says, what's the next step? So I ask you today, keep moving forward, or right, what's the next step? Keep moving forward, what's the next step? When you hit that wall, you don't know which way to go. I always say turn right is always going to point you in the right direction. Whether that works or not, it always worked for me. Everything that I've done is not going to work for you. My, my whole purpose is just to give you ideas because what I want for myself, I want for others. I want to see people succeed. I just, if you never tasted real success in life, I want you to taste it for at least once. And once you taste it, it's like eating ice cream for the first time. You're like, what on earth was that that I just had? And it makes you want it more. And then you start to inquire about it. And once you start to inquire about it, you're setting yourself on a road, on a path to success. I said this before, I'll say it again. I was successful before I left prison. My mind was made up. And I haven't turned or looked back since. Because my goal is to continue to move forward and find out what the next step is. So I can accomplish it, get it out of the way, and keep moving. That's what life is all about. It's about the journey, enjoying the journey. The whole idea and expectation of balance, that it takes you to a place of success, it drives you to success, it helps you with your expectations. Uh, some people expect to succeed, other people ex expect not to succeed. What do I mean by that? Some people set themselves up for the day or the year. I've, I've, I've witnessed it when people say, like, oh, have you been paying attention to the global warming? This is going to be the hottest summer on record. I'm like, not really. And when I hear stuff like that, I, I let it rub off. Uh, I, lo I let it go in one ear and out the other ear. That's my expression for that. It's like, in fact, my expression for this summer, 2024, is this is going to be the coolest summer on hand. My expectation for summer, although I'm a realist and I know it's probably going to be pretty warm, but I'm not expecting it to be one of the hottest summers on record. I'm expecting it to be the opposite. I really, in my heart, believe that this is going to be one of the coolest summers. And for me, that's my expectations and that's what I'm going to get in return, uh, a cool summer. Because of it, that's my expectation. That's what's going to shape my summer. Could it be I'm probably going to be at the beach more because my kids are always asking to go to the beach? Am I going to hang out in the pool more? Because God has blessed us uh, generously to have a, our pool at the house. So for me, it's going to be a cool summer in every aspect of the word, physically, mentally, and spiritually. It's going to be one of the coolest summers that I've personally had. And that's my expectations because we get met at our level of expectations. So if you expect, expect to be successful, as you heard my daughter say earlier, you're gonna be successful. I've, this little girl has so much faith and anytime she makes a blanket statement, I'm gonna be campy of the year, or I'm gonna do good in gymnastics, she succeeded because it's been instilled in her and not just her, my other kids as well too. That expectation of expectancy and you've heard other guests on my show tell a little bit about the background um, in its of expectation of a mindset that throws your balance off. 
So you can say with your mouth, oh, I want to do this. I want to be a millionaire. I can do this. And don't have the correct balance in your life to help you achieve those objectives and, and goals. I, I wish you the best of luck. At the end of the day, the expectations should be simple and achievable. And they're achievable when you have the right balance and mindset. Balance and mindset are like they run hand in hand together. And for me as a business owner, we have to balance out all the re requests that comes in to, to get jobs done. And once we promise a person or tell a person that, hey, you're scheduled for this day, and sometimes we have a lot more jobs and the weather brain comes into factor. And but we're, we're straightforward and we're up front people, up front with people when we let them know if there's gonna be a delay. But one thing I won't do because um, of my integrity when it comes to this stuff, I've had opportunities being at a job site, knowing that this is like the last job before I get to the last job because this person had been waiting for maybe two or three weeks or two or three months. And then you have somebody come up to you and ask you for a quote to do their trees. I really can't quote it, but if I had to put a quote on it, you're probably looking at 450 or 500 bucks, we'll give or take. And they offer you a thousand to a couple thousand dollars more. So, well, I'll, 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 I'll throw a thousand or 2000 more if you can do it right now. And as tempting as that seemed, the answer is no, because my word has already been out. I'm the crew, I'm, you know, I'm with the crew that's got to go get that last job. And so instead of taking the money, you take the high road and say, I absolutely not, I appreciate the opportunity, but I, my word is already out there. That's balance. Because you, what you don't want to do is tip the scale and unbalance that scale uh, and unbalance that scale by taking that job. And then it's like a domino effect because now you don't get to the last job. The last job goes uh, to the next day and then you already had a full day the next day. And then your integrity in question. Then you got to call this customer and tell them an untruth why you can't make it. Oh, somebody offered me more money so uh, we had to reschedule you for another day. That's, that doesn't sit well with me. It actually puts a bad taste in my mouth so I wouldn't do it. But that's me. But that's a part of my balance. That's what keeps the wheels grease. That's what keeps the, the show on the road. Um, and, and it keeps the pot, not only a positive outlet, but my guys are watching. And they, he said, man, most guys were, you know, if I had got my, my guys that work with me come up to me and said, man, most people would have took that money because the guy offered cash. And we all, you know, we were sitting there watching the whole thing unfold. That took integrity to do what you did. Uh, you know, if you can't work in integrity and be uh, forthcoming and, 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 and honor your own word, then what do you have? And so my, my goal and mission is to continue to build, but I build through balance. And why I'm going to keep saying that because that's what that show is about, balance. It can be any context that you want to, but without balance, it's, it's hard to be successful. And you can, be, you can read all the uh, motivational and positive scripts that are out there but you still have to balance it out. And as you see, as we go along with these podcasts, I'm giving you reality of what's helped me build my little miniature empire, what has built and helped me be a success. And it's through balance. With balance comes a whole different set of skills. You have to have good listening skills instead of talking skills all the time. Listening, especially to a client or a customer, uh, tell you the objective of what they want. You have to balance that out. Sometimes the customer, they'll tell you what they want and it's going to unbalance a tree. It's a, it's, a, it's a good segue. Balance, balance a tree. Because if you over prune a tree and you don't balance it, you just hurt that tree. And, you know, with family and friends, sometimes you have to be a good listener. Even, even when it's negative, you want to listen to it. I, I know I said this before. I have the baseball rule, the three strikes you're out. I'm always going to re redirect uh, when a person's being very negative and, and, and they can't see it. And so you try to redirect and say, well, it's not that bad. It'd be fine. And so through the balance of listening, you listen, you listen, and sometimes that's all you can do. Sometimes you don't even have a comment form at all besides, hey, listen, I heard what you said. 
I wish you the best. I'm going to keep you in my prayers. And it's not being political because sometimes people just want to be heard. And you don't always have to say something. But there's a balance to it as well, too. Um, it can transform uh, your business uh, through the interactions. Um, from Not only just from your business, I interact with other businesses. I'm always referring to other businesses. And uh, the balance... What's funny to me, I've never done this as a person, but what's really funny to me when uh, another business that's in my same field, like, hey, and if you can't, if you, if, if you got some uh, too much work and you can't handle, which I understand why, you can just throw it that way. Hey, man, but I'm, I'm slow this week. Can you throw some work my way? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, my work is kind of balanced out. So I have work throughout the year and I can keep my guys busy. And so that would be, I will unbalance the scale if, number one, that I even consider to take my work and give it to somebody else. I'll unbalance the scale once I already got the work and somebody else show up to do the job when the customer was expecting me. So not only am I going to take money off the plate for my business, but I'm also going to lose business because... People are gonna be like, we hired Tucker. That's not Tucker's trucks out there. So it's it, it's it, it's funny, you know. You can help people to a certain extent, and I only give good referrals, and that's easier said than done. Uh, so basically, what that comes down to is, regardless of what field you're in, if you, uh, if you haven't done work for me, I haven't seen your work, I can't refer you. I meet people and trade. So we trade business cards. And if you, you have an interest in business, regardless of whether it is, whether you have a tradesman, a electrician, a consultant, if I refer you because I get a good vibe from you, I always put a disclaimer. Hey, listen, I just met this person at a trade show. I've never used them. I did a little research background. So you got to proceed with caution. I think this is a good person. It might be a good fit because this is what you're looking for. I don't vouch and be like, oh man, this guy's did plenty of work for me. He's gonna do a good job. And it turns out this person doesn't do a good job. You just took credibility away from yourself. So that's why I personally don't do it. I refer a bunch of people, but I wanna make sure that I'm giving good referrals. Some people just want a referral or you to refer them just because you know them. And I've done that in the past and I've been burnt. But as we know, we call it the BD rule, bad decision rule, or we graduated from that. So you don't put people through a tough time because you refer somebody and you vouch for somebody that you have no clue what this person that you just referred them to about to get themselves into. So you want to kind of, me personally, I want to vet a person either by using them personally or softly introducing them to somebody that has that need to say, listen, let me know how this work out because it's the first time we're both going to be using this person. To really balance your life out, you have to overcome your self-imposed stereotypes. I'll use myself as an example. I drive Fords. I love, I love Ford vehicles, not that they're better than any other vehicle. Simply, it's my own personal stereotype. I'm 6'5", so I'm a big guy, so I like the way they fit. Does it make Ford a better truck than the competitors out there? Probably not. Follow me. I'm, I'm taking you somewhere. I like the Ford. This person likes a, a, a Dodge. This person likes the Chevy. This person's like the Toyotas. At the end of the day, they all make pretty good vehicles. It's just a personal stereotype that we have because where it gets confusing and lost in our mind is when we stereotype and uh, put it into a context of like, oh, I'll never drive that. I'll never, I'll never drive a Chevy. I'll never drive a Dodge. That used to be me. Get stranded on the side of the road. You lose that stereotype real quick. You're going to drive what's ever available and whatever's going to get the job done and whatever's going to get you to your destination. When we lose those stereotypes, we bring back balance to our life because what we don't know we don't know. We may think in our mind that a Ford is better 
than a Chevy or a Dodge. That's our personal preference. And that's our personal stereotype. And that's what keeps us from growing. That takes the balance away from us. And the only way that we can move and grow as a business person in our personal life is balance. And stereotypes takes away from those balance. Oh, I, when it comes to food, oh, I don't eat, I only eat my fish fried. I don't, I can't have it any other way. And then one day you're hungry and you're starving and all they have is baked fish and you try it for the first time. And yeah, you're hungry. So it's pretty good. And then you, if you're really being honest with yourself, well, man, this is better than pretty good. I never had it this way. Maybe I should try this more often. That's balance. You have to give yourself a chance in the game. I'll leave you with this. Balance. Here's my seven steps to balance. One, less you say, the more words will matter. Two, when you focus on your problems, you will have more problems. When you focus on the possibilities, you have more opportunities. Three, no matter how it hurts now, one day you'll look back and realize how much your struggles change your life for the better. Four, sometimes you never know the value of a moment until it becomes memory. Five, once you begin to think of the things that you're grateful for, you begin to lose sight of the things that you lack. Six, if you do not have control over your mouth, you will not have control over your future. Seven, life is a mirror and we reflect back to the thinker what they think and to it. Remember those seven steps and if you can, apply them and see what happens. What do you have to lose? Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Remember to LCS, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget about my book, 7,000 Volts. It's coming out pretty soon. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and you can contact us on ljtucker.com. Have a great week. Thank you.